coming up right now, we've got um, Mr. Hemant Mehta, Managing Director, Media, Digital, and Chief Strategy Officer of Kanta IMRB. He's going to speak about the changing fashion consumer and how the industry can keep pace with this change. Over to Mr. Hemant Mehta. Morning, uh, everyone. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking IFF for inviting me over and giving me a chance to be with you. Um, I find it very ironic. Um, in front of you is a portly man who has perhaps little or no sense of fashion. Imagine me talking to you guys who uh, breathe, eat and live fashion and fashion business. So I think it's only uh, right that I stay away from talking about fashion and fashion business, but focus on what your end consumers are, the users or the end consumers. So I'm going to talk to you about um, some learnings and insights that we've got on the consumers. Um, let me start off by first uh, uh, quoting the legend, Coco Chanel. Um, she said that fashion is not something that exists in dresses. Uh, fashion is in the sky, in the street, in, and fashion has to do with ideas and the way we live and what is happening. Um, as a market researcher, I, the way I would interpret this is that what she really tried to say, perhaps, is that uh, fashion seems to stem from the consumer herself, the environment in which uh, she lives, and her need to respond to events and happenings that are taking, around, uh, taking place around her. Um, this is an, uh, I mean, oft-repeated story. I don't need to say, if you look at the country in the last two decades, there's been a huge change. Um, GDP has been growing, there's rapid urbanization, an explosion of choices, uh, both in terms of brands and the outlets from where we can source them, as well as the rise of e-commerce. Uh, some of these mega changes uh, that we have all witnessed, benefited, and responded to, Indian fashion industry, we believe, has been a big beneficiary of this growing disposable incomes and changing lifestyles of the Indian consumers. What we see today is that the uh, consumer base for the fashion industry is not any more restricted to the typical, stereotypical urban, young, affluent classes, but has actually expanded beyond the large cities across age groups and across income classes. Consumers' mindsets also seem to be uh, evolving, especially in the way they see and define the role of style and grooming in their lives. Today, more than half uh, the urban Indian consumers tr strive very hard to keep in touch and stay up with the latest fashions. And interestingly, this number has grown by about 13% in last one year. Uh, this is the data from Kantar IMRB's uh, proprietary study called the Target Group Index. I'll be quoting this uh, data source as we go along quite often. This, so what this uh, data point seems to indicate is it just says how critical it is to be seen as being trendy and fashionable today. Um, as a society, grooming or shringar has, especially among us, our women, has always been an integral part of our lives. But what is interesting is that we seem to have redefined the role of grooming from just looking good to actually showcasing our success. If you look at the TGI, we find that a 12% increase in those who endorse that grooming is essential for being successful in life. So besides apparel, categories which are part of the daily grooming regime, like say deos or face washes or skin creams, are no doubt uh, today showing the double digit growth year on year. All of us in this room will agree with one thing, that consumer is at the heart of all the things that we do, be it the products that we create or the marketing and communication plans that we devise. After all, consumer centricity is the glue which binds the brand with its consumers. So over the next 10 minutes, what I'm going to do is to share with you some snapshots from the consumer landscape, which I believe will impact our businesses. The first is the changing physicality. The physique and physicality of Indians is changing, and these have huge impact on the fashion apparel and footwear businesses. If you look at um, 100 years back uh, and now, uh, Indians have grown taller. 
Uh, women have grown taller by about five centimeters, outstripping men who have grown by about three centimeters. If you look at the weight um, and you look at the BMI, the body mass index, uh, what we find that it is expanding at both the ends. So you've got a large chunk of consumers who are underweight and a growing chunk of consumers who are overweight. Now, mind you, I'm talking about urban India. I'm talking about consuming classes. So the underweight consumer is not a consumer uh, who's underweight due to a paucity of nutrition, but it's a, uh, either a choice or the physical uh, genetic makeup. Now, so the question that I have for you is that are we looking at the needs of these underweight and especially overweight consumers like me who form nearly half of the uh, population? Another trend that we are noticing is the growing obesity, especially amongst men. These segments need different products, different sizes, and different marketing focus. Uh, we recently uh, did a study amongst uh, men to understand their wardrobes. Uh, when we asked about one key quest, uh, issue or uh, complaint that they had while buying ready-made apparel, uh, most men said that it was about finding the right size and right fit. They felt that the collar and waist sizes differed across brands, and therefore they ended up having to alter their garments. Fashion industry has uh, historically focused on women, but hey, uh, men also seem to be changing and invading the grooming uh, domain. Today, urban Indian men are as much into maintenance as uh, women. In fact, uh, some very, which I'm not very proud to say, some, some people say that men of today are the women of 80s. If you look at the organized male grooming market uh, in the country, it's one of the, fargest, the fastest uh, growing segments. In a short span, the industry has crossed a, a half a billion dollar mark, and it continues to grow in double digits. So what's driving this growth? Actually, it's the sense of vanity. Looking good is now feeling good. Being attractive is no longer something to be shy of. If you have it, flaunt it. If you don't have it, work on it and get it. That seems to be the mantra. And men seem to be, uh, you know, investing and working hard on it. Again, going back to our TGS survey, uh, which maps the consumer's lifestyles and products and services that they use, we find that nearly half of all men claim to take special care to enhance their appearance, often by visiting the salons. One in ten urban men is now visiting a salon for not just a haircut, but also to avail of services like either facial or waxing or threading. And looking good extends to the wardrobe too. An audit of the wardrobe of urban Indian man reveals a wide range of garments, which reflects his love for variety choice of different uh, garments for different occasions, and most importantly, his need to experiment. Wardrobes are today uh, finely segmented. We dress differently for work, for the gym, for parties and special occasions, uh, for lounging at home, for evening walks, for sleeping, etc. And the list continues to expand with newer aspects and occasions entering our lives. And the variety in clothing is also now becoming gender agnostic. An av average urban woman uh, today has a, a wardrobe that consists of saris, salwar kameezes, shirts, trousers, active wear, and sleepwear, uh, sleep to name a few. Also, the age of fusion is here. The number of women buying both Western wear and active wear has more than doubled in the last five years. The biggest uh, paradigm shift that we have one is seeing is in the frequency and the occasions of shopping for apparel. Uh, gone are the days when we used to buy apparel for special occasions. Uh, we now seem to be moving into an era where impulse shopping for apparel is on the rise. And there are several reasons for this, perhaps. One is that you find today more adult, our adults are employed and therefore they have higher disposable incomes as well as more need for different apparel. Second, there is a, a much higher incidence of and a growing number of women who are joining the uh, workforce. Three, we seem to be spending a lot more time outside the home. Uh, our study shows that in the last five years, we're spending two extra hours away from home. 
And the last is the exponential growth in the uh, activities which are being done on the weekends, be it visiting the malls, going for movies, going on an outdoor trek, or even eating out. All these changes are fueling the need for more apparel choices and driving the consumers to buy more pieces and more often. So with the rise of e-commerce, shopping of, uh, for apparel seems to have taken a completely different form. We seem to be shopping for apparel as much, and I'm, I'm going to make a controversial statement, as much as we shop for a shampoo. Uh, if you look at uh, our uh, e-commerce shopping panel, which we uh, run across urban India, uh, we find that men shop for apparel every 48 days as compared to women who shop for apparel online once every two months. Another trend that we see is the consumers of, of, of consumers seeking options which offer them a complete look. There seems to be a slow and gradual shift away from buying individual pieces of garments at any one point in time. Again, I'm showing you on the slide are two examples of invoices uh, from our e-commerce shopping panel, which shows that on average, six products or items are being bought together to put together a complete ensemble. Other change is the role of accessories. Accessories today seem to be uh, considered as a means to personalize mass-produced high street apparel as every individual is looking to make a statement and break the clutter. Again, going to TGI, we find that 45% of individuals from urban, and these are consuming classes, social class ABC, consider accessories to be an important contributor to their grooming regime. Interestingly, it is men who outspend women when it comes to shopping for accessories. Uh, a typical male shopper spends about 1,500 rupees when shopping for accessories online as compared to 900 being spent by uh, an average online shopper, a woman online shopper. Shoes for men in particular have become an integral part of the overall look and styling and this seems to help him personalize his uh, look. Uh, if you look at the working men, 25 to 35 year old, we find that on an average today, they own about four pairs uh, for different occasions, be it two formals, one casual, one running shoes. And on, on an average, they buy a pair every three to four months and spend about 1,200 rupees. Um, I, I'm stating the obvious, uh, we seem to be li living online and social media, besides being the, one of the biggest drivers of enhanced uh, vanity, is actually a, a theater to showcase one's achievement, one's uh, personality, beauty and style quotient, self-esteem and material success. And with that um, arises the need to look trendy, stylish and different on every occasion as every picture that I post online needs to showcase my new clothes, my new accessories, and new makeup. You'll notice on this slide that the need to look good is much higher amongst those who spend more time on social networking sites like Facebook and Instagram. We seem to be living in an age of moments or instance. I've used and coined a phrase called instancy. Um, there's, there seems to be an overpowering need uh, to change for something different. This is manifested in our careers, in fashion and styling, in the brands and the relationship that we have with brands, and even our personal relationships. We just have to look at the uh, divorce statistics in the country, um, and it just is a very good manif uh, manifestation of the trend of transiency. The question for us as marketers, therefore, is, how do we hold attention and patronage of our customers who are looking for something new every day and at every occasion? With parents, uh, you know, topping over it, uh, or toppling each other in terms of trying to look good, can kids be uh, far behind? A decade back, uh, parents probably believed that they were the decision makers for the kids' wardrobe. Uh, not anymore. Kids today have a mind and a voice of their own and are particularly vocal in their expression. As per Kanta IMRB's KidScan, one in five kids 
uh, emphatically state that while buying clothes, only they decide. And mind you, here we are talking to kids as young as 5 to 14 year olds. If it's not them, 40% claim that parents actually consult them and they go with the choice that the kid makes. Look at what they do with the pocket money that they have. Um, they, they end up buying fashion, styling and vanity products. So essentially the point I'm trying to make that kids today are young adults and are also seeking a complete look, much like their parents. The implication for us really as marketers is to talk to them as adults rather than mollycoddle them as kids. Another trend that we're seeing amongst the consumers is the down-aging syndrome. So 40 is the new 30 and 30 is the new 20. Where this is particularly seen amongst women who, who seem to be rediscovering themselves and their lives. Therefore, what we find is that this demographic is adopting to fashion trends far more than before and they're also considerably investing in looking young, stylish and trendy. Well, uh, what's the grandma doing here? The grandma's uh, here for a reason. If you look at the golden ages or retirees, this is a new segment which seems to be emerging on the spending arena. These are affluent consumers with high disposable incomes who are rediscovering the joys of life. They are free of their familial duties and have the financial meals, means to explore, experiment and indulge themselves. If you look at the travel and tourism industry, they're really capitalizing on them. There are famous uh, retiree tours from say K Street uh, Travels for, as an example. What we find is that with increased mobility, their apparel and styling also is changing, particularly amongst women who find uh, that when they adopt salwar kameezes and jeans and sneakers, they find it more practical and comfortable for themselves. And the last uh, point that I'd like to uh, leave you with is about the small town and large town divide. If you look at um, uh, this divide, we all believe that the consumers in small towns are very different from the uh, metros. The color palette or the kind of uh, apparel or shoes that they prefer is very, very different. But category after category that we study, we find that this divide is virtually non-existent and more in the minds of us what seems to have happened is that media has homogenized uh, aspirations and fashion and styling across geographies. With the onset of e-commerce, uh, it's brought to the doorstep of the small town consumers the brands and products which were hitherto not available to them. Today, what we find is that every brand, every trend, every style and lifestyle is within actually the easy reach of the consumers in small towns of India. This has made them as interested in following the latest fashion or purchasing an expensive brand as their metro counterparts. If you look at our statistics from our e-commerce shopper panel that I spoke about earlier, we find that over half of apparel purchases are actually being made by consumers from small towns. They also shop for apparel once every alternate month, and on an average, the ticket size is about 700 rupees. So the point I would like to leave behind is that the small town consumer today is as important, if not more important, than their metro con uh, counterparts. So in conclusion, what I'd like to say is that we seem to be living in an age where fashion is all around us, and it's encompassing all ages. We saw the kids, we saw all the way to the grandmas and all social classes. And urban Indians like us seem to be living up to the famous quote of Bill Cunningham who said that fashion is the armor to survive the reality of everyday life. Thank you.